We made our landfall in the Lao group at the island of Vanua Balavu after an overnight passage from Taveuni. The overcast sky made it very difficult to see the reefs fringing either side of the entrance channel. Luckily, there were range marks on shore to confirm our navigation. So we're heading in to give our gift of kava to the local chief uh, to request permission to anchor at his island. In the villages, it's customary for men to wear a garment called a sulu, especially for more formal occasions. One of the main businesses in the village is collecting and drying sea cucumbers. Oh, lovely. Wow. <laughs> yeah, the Chinese love like for rice, medicine or for food? Yeah, yeah. Medicine. 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 Food. Both. Wow. <laughs> Very interesting. With the Sevu Sevu ceremony complete and permission obtained, we backtracked a little to the uninhabited northern section of the island. We floated the chain as we had learned to do in the Tuamotus to prevent snagging on coral when the boat swings. This area is stunningly beautiful. Countless little islets dot the surroundings, green tufted knobs with undercut bottoms and steep sides. It's a pristine and untouched wilderness, and we wanted to explore every hidden cove with the dinghy. This definitely makes the top of my list for coolest places we've been yet. It's really beautiful here. hunting bats. Supposedly somewhere around here is a huge colony of giant fruit bats. But we haven't found them yet.
Wanting to see a more distant area, we set the dinghy sailing rig for a day of exploration. A bit of a surge. It's a pretty cool spot. These trees must be so tough. They just found a tiny hole in the rock and they're growing out of it. And they filled the hole entirely with their trunk. Every few days, we would raise the anchor and move just around the corner to enjoy this beautiful place from a new vantage point. Look at this. It's our own private swimming hole. We found an accessible point on the cliffs and attempted to explore the land, but the extremely sharp rocks and impenetrable brush didn't let us get very far. It's definitely a place best seen from the water. Friends from a boat anchored nearby invited us to join them for some bouldering over the water. Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no.
Whenever we find ourselves in a calm, shallow anchorage like this, we try to clean the new growth off the bottom of the hull. With our clean hull, it was time to head back out to sea to find another island to explore. Vanua Balavu was certainly a highlight for us, with its unique beauty and unspoiled wildness. The sunny skies made it much easier to see the coral as we transited the pass back out to open water. Squall on, huh? Yeah, we went from four to seven knots in just a matter of seconds. You can see the rain approaching behind you. Yeah. Oh gosh, I'm smoke get on the water. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna hide up below. You better get that tiller balanced. <laughs> We are leaving Vanua Balavu in the Lao group, and we're heading halfway across Fiji, basically, uh, to Makungai, I think it's pronounced, which is an island that used to be a leper quarantine station, uh, where basically people were rounded up and sent to live the rest of their lives with leprosy. 
Uh, but these days it's mostly abandoned. I think there's one small village. Uh, but the reason we're going there is because we're starting to feel like we're running out of time in Fiji and we need to kind of work our way towards the other side of the country. So this is about halfway across, it's about 120 miles or so. Should take us just over 24 hours. Uh, we've got pretty light winds. Making four knots on course. There's supposed to be good snorkeling there and lots of cool things to see. We were hoping to see a bit more of the Lao group, uh, which is the far eastern archipelago of Fiji. But the wind just never quite cooperated for us to transit between the islands. And we felt like we didn't want to go for less than a week or so because you meet the village, you get a host family, you know, you do the kava ceremony, all of that. We didn't really want to swing through for one night, you know, in, in that situation. So that's all right. Got to see something the next time around the world. After the closure of the leprosy quarantine station, the island began to be used by the government as a hatchery for giant clams and coral. That one, that one, this one. <laughs> How big do they get before you put them on the reef? Um, just 20 centimeters. Mm. We put it on the slab there, mm -hmm. the square yeah. one. How wow. old is a clam that big? Oh, this one about uh, uh, 35, 40 years. Yeah. Any so is graveyard. Any from this graveyard. We learned that the buildings that had survived a recent hurricane were made of a special wood from a place called Oregon. Yeah. Oh, you from Oregon? That's the same wood that our boat is made from. That's not an optical illusion. That clam is over a meter across.
Next time, we will cross to the far western edge of Fiji to cruise the Yasawa Islands. We will find beautiful anchorages and some of the best coral reefs we have seen anywhere. Making our way to this part of Fiji will put us in a good position to prepare for another big ocean voyage, continuing westward over the horizon. <laughs>